very good afternoon and a very warm welcome to our side event at the 33rd Commission on Crime Prevention and Criminal Justice here in Vienna. Also a warm welcome to our online attendees from all over the world. Thanks so much. Uh, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, uh, your excellencies, thank you for being here today. Uh, the name of our side event today is Strong Family and Essential Support for Healthy Development of Children and Youth a relevant factor in preventing criminal activity. So uh, we were excited to also notice that today is actually also the International Day of the Family. So a good day to promote the strength of the family <laughs> and how it benefits our societies. So without further ado, I would like to welcome our director of the Women's Federation for World Peace, UN Team Vienna office, uh, Dr. Maria Liu and she will give a word of greeting. Yeah. Thank you again for coming, dear friends, dear excellencies, and dear co-worker. Um, two days, now is third day of this big conference of um, Commission on Crime Prevention and Social Justice. And first days, we listen to many, um, to reports from the, from the governments, and we could participate on some side events, huge associations how to deal with uh, crime. Today is a special day of the family. And today we, want, we wish to look at the smallest unit in our society, the family. What can family offer to the society? What can we, like parents, like mothers and fathers, and siblings, daughters, uncle and aunties, offer to the society that we, keep, we feel secure, we feel understood, <coughs> we can talk about our, our world, about our uh, <coughs> challenges, about everything what we, what we receive through newsletters, through information. We are living in a world where so many information are going around and on the end we <coughs> come together watching and listening to our children and asking them, how was your day? Mm -hmm. And on this way, we can learn to communicate with each other, we can learn to understand each other, and we can uh, give uh, the world of happiness and, and something very, very personal, what the common, the all kind of relationships we can learn and we can experience how to take care of each other. When children are hurt, hurt themselves, so they always look for somebody. Mama, where are you? Papa, please help me. So and we can hug them and we can put some plaster on, on the wound and we can say after a couple of days, until you get married, everything will be good. <laughs> so I listen. <laughs> So, greetings from uh, um, to you, and I give a break to you, Kevin, that we can listen to, to the other speakers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maya, for your uh, words of greeting. Uh, the dynamics of the family, the beauty of it. Thank you so much. So, uh, we're going to go to the opening remarks, which will be extended by Your Excellency. Etsy Daryl Jenrin Migano. Thank you for being here, Ms. Migano. She's, she's the attache and assistant of the Permanent Mission of the Philippines. We want to thank the Mission of the Philippines for uh, um, supporting our side event. Thank you so much. And the questions. <coughs> to those who are joining us here today, as well as our participants online, let me wish you a good afternoon. I wish to convey my appreciation to the Women's Federation for World Peace for the invitation to be part of this important event on the margins of the 33rd session of the Commission on Crime Prevention and Criminal Justice, CCPCJ. It is with great honor to open this afternoon's side event on a topic of profound significance, strong family and essential support for healthy development of children and youth, a relevant factor in preventing criminal activity. The family, often described as the cornerstone of society, 
plays a pivotal role in shaping the future of our children. It is within the family unit that children first learn about love, trust, and security. A strong family provides the emotional foundation that children and youth need to navigate the complexities of life. It is a source of unwavering support, guiding them through challenges and celebrating their successes. In today's fast-paced world, the importance of a stable and nurturing family environment cannot be overstated. Research consistently shows that children who grow up in supportive families tend to perform better academically, exhibit healthier behaviors, and develop stronger social skills. They are more likely to become resilient adults who contribute positively to society. As we explore this topic further, we will discuss how strong family bonds to foster a sense of belonging and self-worth in young individuals, the critical role of parental involvement in education, and the impact of family support on mental and emotional health. In the Philippines, our constitution provides the legal framework to support a strong family unit. Parents are fundamentally responsible for raising their child and providing the basic necessities of food, clothing, shelter, as well as ensuring the child's right to education and providing a safe environment for the child's physical, emotional, and psychological well-being are nurtured. The state may intervene in cases of neglect or abuse where the parents fail to meet their constitutional obligations. Together, let us reaffirm our commitment to strengthening family ties and ensuring that every child has the opportunity to thrive in a loving and supportive environment. As I end, I wish to congratulate WFWP for organizing this important side event, which is a timely reminder of the vital role that strong families play in a healthy development of children and youth. On behalf of Ambassador Evangelina Lourdes Bernas, I thank you once again and wish everyone a productive discussion. Thank you so much, uh, the state for the work so recognized and implemented in their structures. So thank you so much. We're going to go to our first uh, speaker of today, um, uh, Mr. Patrick Erlinson. It will be a video message. Um, he is the founder of FatherCon. Uh, he used to work in prevention of human trafficking. <laughs> well, we can let him talk first and then I maybe can explain it. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> so he has uh, been working for, a lot, for many years in a prevention of human trafficking in LA, in Los Angeles, America, and uh, Yes, through uh, listening to the stories of survivors, he uh, noticed the link between parenthood and especially fatherhood uh, and uh, victims um, that he talked to. So that's how he uh, found his father called to address the link between fathers and human trafficking. And he will explain here a little bit more. Uh, he will, he, our speakers uh, with the video messages are also online. So thank you so much, Patrick, for being here. And let's uh, listen to your video message. Greetings from Los Angeles. Excellent Can you put the volume up a bit? Many yeah. gratitude to the Women's Federation of World Peace and the Congress for all you do for families around the world and for being so welcoming of me as a husband, father of two girls, and recently a grandfather of a beautiful little boy. The experience of becoming a grandfather, seeing my little girl as a mom, is truly a wonder continuity of standing at the intersection of the past present, and future in a very different way than as a parent. I have to admit, though, that for all the wonderful emotions rushing back with memories of changing baby diapers and having that familiar soggy spot on my shoulder for baby rules, I also feel a sad awareness that too many men never make it through the ups and downs of marriage to reach this place of amplified joy. I've been invigorated to work even harder to reach more men with the message of Father Tom. That what we are so often told will make us happy doesn't hold a candle to loving and being loved as a father. 
my organization, the Fathathon, was born out of eight years of working on the prevention of human trafficking and recognizing that in too many survivor stories and the testimonies of those who use their freedom to deprive others of theirs, there was a father missing or causing hurt in some other way. I began to realize that when fathers get it right, so many other things fall into place. Wives and children are healthier and stronger. When a father is engaged with his kids, playing with them, allowing them to step out of walls and jump from trees, the world becomes a little less scary and threatening, and people are not all dangerous. This may seem a strange thing to say for someone who's worked for 12 years on the prevention of human trafficking and who has heard horror stories of dangers to children that I wish I didn't know. But it is important. We are designed as human beings to live in a very different world than what we are in now. Threats to children have only increased and become more deadly and destructive with the easy access to children provided by the internet, social media, and AI. And for all the reasons we have to be afraid, fear will not protect our children from the monsters. Not under our bed or in shadows, but hunting for them with promises of love and money and delivering only a damaged identity and hopeless resignation to the abuse of being used. The antidote is a stronger identity and confidence of being loved. When a father tells his daughter daily she's beautiful and loved, the hollow proclamations of the predator lose their force. When a child grows up trusting in the presence of a father, that child has more empathy, a greater sense of being worthy of love, and appreciates education and resists harmful behavior. Thank you again to Vienna uh, sometime soon. Yes, then it's my honor to uh, introduce our next speaker of today, uh, Mrs. Veronica Lippert. Uh, she is the chairperson of Elfenwerkstatt, uh, which uh, kind of means like the parents' working group, I would say, for the non German speaking. Uh, online and here. So um, she's a mother of three, pedagogue, conflict management trainer, and certified parent trainer. And uh, she will be speaking on communi communication training for parents and her work with Elton Bergstadt. So thank, <laughs> thank you for being here, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Yeah. Parent education is the leap from knowledge directly to the heart. Parent education is violent. We would like to express our credit and appreciation to the Women's Federation for World Peace. It is a great honor and pleasure for us to be here today and to be able to speak about this important issue. Parent education as a safe <coughs> factor in the prevention of violence and the strengthening of families remarkably close to our hearts. As the motto of Edwin Werkstatt, Parents Workshop, so aptly sums it up, if the parents doing well, so are the children. Thinking the further, families are doing well, society is doing well. Unfortunately, violence amongst children is reported increasingly. Children learn what they are taught to by example. When a child grows up in, a, in, a, in an environment, of violence, whether physical or psychological, they often became or become violent themselves. Violence by children against children is a fundamental problem that should be not ignored. It is a vicious cycle where we have to acti actively work against in order to reduce it in our society. Violence often begins on a small scale in the form of bullying, and assault among children. It is important to intervene in time and to show our exemplify to the children how to resolve conflicts in a non-violent way. Numerous reports from Austrian schools paint a worrying picture. Whether in Vienna, Graz, or Innsbruck, or other cities, children are victims of violence by their peers. The number of unreported cases is high as many victims remain silent out of fear or shame. The effects of violence among children are the rest of the Psychology trauma 
propensity, social resolutions, and even suicidal thoughts can be the result. Violence by children against children is an alarm sign that something is wrong in our society. We can see this extremely well in the current situation of our world. Violence among children is a global problem. Parenting is a universal experience that exists all over the world. Therefore, parent education could be seen worldwide as a peace project. It requires our attention and action to ensure that children can behave in a safe and respectful environment. Children should never have to be afraid going to school, moving around playground grounds, and even go home. We must work together to foster a culture of non-violence and respect. Family dynamics are really a serving society, those are really psychological perspective. Thank you so much. I'm sure you also have a lot to tell about uh, your daily practice at work, but yeah. perhaps uh, people can ask them themselves. Also, uh, for the people online, uh, we have here like a bios printed about the backgrounds of our speakers, but if you, uh, we cannot provide online this time, but if you would wish to know more about our speakers online, uh, please feel free to contact us and we will provide this information to you. So, from Vienna we go to Kenya. Our next speaker is also online, Mrs. Lilian Nyaludasi. Um, welcome Lilian. Um, Lilian is a lawyer and youth advocate and uh, she is also the co-founder of Set Free to Fry. And uh, she prepared a video message. Um, as a lawyer, she offers legal aid to victims and survivors of crime and human trafficking. And um, yes, it is uh, her nonprofit organization dedicated, is dedicated to uh, combating modern slavery and crime. So, Lilian prepared a very nice video for us uh, and describing all the work that they are doing there in uh, Kenya. So, let us uh, listen to Lilian. I'm an attorney working as an advocate in the Republic of Kenya. I also am a co-founder and a director of Safety to Thrive, an organization working to combat human trafficking and crime amongst young people in Kenya within East Africa. Safety to Thrive has many program areas and activities, and all of them are aimed towards preventing crime and human trafficking. One of our program areas is to create awareness against human trafficking, against crime, and other social ills. We believe that an educated mind is a mind that is able to protect itself. We do this by going into schools and other public forums like youth camps and churches to teach young boys and girls as well as the older generation. Apart from this, we also run a program to reach out to school-going children because in several countries in the global south, persons or children who are of school-going age, immediately they attain their menstrual age, some of them will drop out of school or will miss schools for several days because of being unable to afford sanitary towels. So with the menstrual health management program, we provide them with reusable and sustainable sanitary kits that they can use for up to 36 months, that is three years if they are well taken care of. And with this, we are sure that we can keep girls in school. We also have a program that reaches out to teenage mothers. Ever since the COVID era, Several countries around Africa have experienced a surge in teenage pregnant mothers on the basis that during the COVID era, most of them were not able to attend school and they mostly stayed at home. And this led to a high dropout of schools. Therefore, we reach out to this special group because they are specifically disadvantaged by their age 
by their social status and economic vulnerability. So by reaching out to them, we can keep them safe and protected from human trafficking and as well as crime. We also run our Thrive Junior Groups, which mainly comprise of teenage boys and girls who are grouped according to where they live. Most of them do live in slums and village areas and so that they can continuously and constantly meet so that we can keep them accountable, we can monitor them, we can mentor them and equip them with the skills required for them to lead wherever they go in preventing crime and also protecting themselves against human trafficking. The teenage groups meet at least twice a month and they do this just to create a safe space for one another. Also have another program where we offer legal aid to victims and survivors of human trafficking and also of crime. Today, I would like to speak about one of the most important tools in fighting and preventing crime amongst young people. And this is the role of positive family relations. In our grassroots activities and experiences, we have noticed that young people who belong to families which nurture positive relations are much less likely to indulge in crime. This is because in families, values, standard behaviors, and also principles of behavior are clearly communicated. So young people will clearly understand from a relatively young age what are the do's and don'ts in a community. And not only that, but also young people in families, then they learn to look up to positive role models in their parents, in their elder siblings, and also in extended family members. And with this, they grow up and they learn at a relatively young age what is acceptable conduct in societies and what is unacceptable. In Kenya as well. So, thanks. So, would, uh, yeah, can we go to the last speaker of today? And we're very happy that uh, Mr. Wadi Malouf is here again with us. Thank you so much for taking time. Um, yes, uh, Mr. Wadi uh, Malouf uh, works at the UNODC as a program officer at the Prevention, Treatment and Rehabilitation <laughs> section uh, at Vienna headquarters. And um, yeah, he joined UNODC in 2006, first phase in Cairo uh, to support the health response to drug in the Middle East and North Africa. And uh, since 2010, he is here in Vienna. So, um, I think we're going to see I, I if the technique is ready. But Mr. Wadi Malouf. It should be on the desktop. On the desktop. It's uh, called Strong Families. Anyway, I can start. Yes. Yes. The floor is yours. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> um, thank you very much for the World Federation for World Peace for, uh, you know, furthermore, <coughs> highlighting the role of families, not only in the Grand Commission, but also in the Drug Commission. And I, I take this opportunity as well to um, to reflect on the fact that, you know, there is a lot of things that have been already mentioned. I, I'll try to not to repeat what's been said, but really reflect on maybe add-ons in terms of why we, we find, you know, as we and OVC, um, through our person-centered approach, um, both on the, when we're working with the drugs and working with the crime, um, how is the family a common entity in terms of support and, and growth? Uh, for us, it's important, I mean, let's go with in terms of when we talk about the culture of prevention, when we, when, because when we talk about the symptom that's happening, crime, drugs, trafficking, and, and you saw it from today's presentation, when we go and zoom in on, on terms of how to support the person that's being affected or being subject or vulnerable to these situations, that person-centered approach, if we're approaching it from a crime perspective, we walk about individual factors, that the person have at different ages of development and the ecological layers around that person. Of course, there are, you know, the family relationship, the school relationship, the, the wider context that this family is in, because raising a child, you heard that, um, is, is, is challenging, but raising a child in the context of vulnerability, of displacement, of conflict, of violence, is even more challenging. And, and the other larger, larger context that said, so addressing crime has this vulnerability matrix. Coincidentally, when we're addressing drug-related issues, 
we're looking at similar vulnerabilities. A person with different kind of reactive to stress, mental health characteristics, um, <coughs> cognitive abilities at different at, at a certain age has an influence that can be either amplified or you know made better by family influences, depending on the context the family is in, the school influences, the peer influences, and the context behind. It. So these are ecological layers are very common. So the home environment is key, is, is important. Um, it has, a, it is the most important influence because you know, in, in any sort of other context, if you can, if you see it, the child is exposed to a certain number of years of exposure, maybe in the school or other context, but within the family, there is a, a different context of, of genes, of history, and a future to that. So poor parenting uh, effects are long lasting. And you know, and, and good parenting skills are good, uh, long lasting to see. It. But when we talk about parenting in the context of violence and crime, we're not talking necessarily about the parents being police officers in the house. We're just talking about really the skills that are needed at a certain age of development. And that's why it's a skill. You don't have a parenting skill that is uniform because it has to evolve with the developing age of the child. And, 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 and children don't come with a manual of instruction to follow. So basically, you have to adapt to the characteristics of the child, and that's why parents do need that support, and these skills are key. We talk about how to warn, praise, listening, assertive discipline, global, you know, um, uh, help, in the, you look, you're looking at yourself as, as a parent. I mean, in theory, it's a very interesting context, but in practice, in the context that we're living in, it's a challenge, and you need to self-reflect in terms of how can I apply this, and that's why these skills can be acquired and trained on over and beyond your, your own skills. They are key characteristics for public health. Questions and answers, we're very sorry, and we hope that next time you perhaps have changed again. So, uh, but please, if you have any questions, feel free to forward it to us, and we try to connect you with the speakers. And so, yes, uh, I don't know if anyone has a question here in the room to one of the speakers. I anyways want to again um, thank all of the speakers here today. Let's give them a hand.